Hello guys, it is Kyle, and today I'll be going over the best laptops of early 2014 that you can get under $1,000. Now in this video I will not be endorsing any $2,500 plus laptops just because most people are looking for something under $1,000. It, like when you look at all the uh, threads that they've created on this, on forums and stuff, it is an immensely popular subject. And up until now it's been very hard to find a decent one. I mean, I mean it hasn't been hard, but you know, the best ones that you could find could only run them at, you know, low settings, like high graphical intense games. And so, but now what you're finding is that they're all getting cheaper. Computers in general have been getting cheaper in the past five years, whereas, you know, five years ago you would have had to spend, you know, $800 to get a computer that could only run, you know, a graphically intensive game at low settings, which now you can do that for four to 500 if you're stretching it. Now, uh, in this video, you'll see no Alienware. I am not a big fan, and you guys have probably all seen the hate on them. And a lot of it is warranted, I will give you that. They, uh, you know, they're expensive. It's $1,000 for the starting price on their 14-inch one, and which is kind of ridiculous because it's the price is not proportional to the whatever they're using and it's just pro proportional to you know their name it's a, it's a name brand like apple you're paying for the name and not the actual quality um so yeah and i, I don't want to start a hate war in the comments so don't think that i hate apple or these um i do enjoy both the companies it's just you know it's it's fact you're paying more than what's actually in the product itself so yeah and then uh, moving on from that little tangent, uh, we're going to go on to the actual things that should be, you know, put in this list. So first off are the Lenovo IdeaPads. Um, it's very hard to put these, not put these on a top 10 list for best gaming computers under $1,000 just because of their bang for the buck, you know, idealism. Uh, Lenovo has put very good specs in these, in the, uh, as you see in the $800 and the $720, they have put in 4th generation i7 processors, which is extremely good for that price point. Um, I mean, you don't even get those in the Alienware until like $1,200 or something. It's insane. Uh, now, as with most laptops nowadays, they're coming with Windows 8.1, and both of them are running NVIDIA uh, graphics cards. Now, the thing is with these, is I would always recommend NVIDIA just because of their, you know, customer support and all that stuff because they, their drivers are always updated for them. It's a, it's a very good experience. So if you can go NVIDIA, it's just a better experience, you know, overall. And you can see that both of these come with an uh, HDD and also an SSD, which makes uh, booting up your OS, your favorite games, so much faster. So it's getting so hard to recommend laptops nowadays or any computer for that matter without an SSD just because SSDs improve the computer performance by like, you know, well, not the performance, but it improves the like user interface and all that stuff that you're doing with it so much more because you don't have to wait, you know, a minute or so for your loading screen to come up, you know? So yeah, now both of these are coming in at five to six pounds which is completely average for a gaming laptop and you know you, you'll all you'll sorry you'll also notice that the more expensive model does have a 1080p display something that the 14 inch model is uh, lacking which is also something that a lot of gaming laptops in the 14 inch you know size are lacking too uh, you'll notice the razor blade that does not have a 1080p monitor uh, you know th there's several that do not so it isn't a, you know, it if it isn't a uh, breaking point for you, then, you know, you can go with the cheaper model. And that is one of the big differences for me between this one and this one. Because battery life is the same, you know, storage is the same. Um, and yeah, the only really big differences is display, graphics card, and, you know, stuff like that. So moving on, we'll go to an Asus uh, laptop. This is a 15-inch laptop using an i7-4700 processor. 
you know, a very capable processor. The only reason I'm really showing you this one and the next product is just to show you, um, you know, the diversity of products that have come out in the last few years. Um, you can, you don't have to go for the same brand every time, even though it may be good, but you can, you can spread out. And now this product is obviously geared towards someone who wants a, you know, lighter, thinner build because of just, you know, traveling or whatever. And it does lack an SSD. This is the one, you know, as I said earlier, it's getting hard to recommend these laptops without them just because it improves the experience so much. So this does have a one terabyte drive, which is, you know, standard in laptops this price range and eight gigabytes of RAM, which is also standard. So you'll see this does pretty much have similar specs to the Lenovo. The only reason you would get this over that is because it's thinner basically and that's about it. <laughs> There's not really much else to recommend in this at all. I mean, it doesn't have the SSD. Uh, I, I don't think it's upgradable to 16 gigs of RAM and it uh, I'm pretty sure has a slower processor. So if you're looking for a thinner, you know, this is going to be the case in laptops all the time. If, you, if you're looking for a thinner laptop, it is always going to get uh, more expensive, you know, just because they have to cram all that stuff into this small chassis with you know while keeping the airflow optimal so moving on from the asus we're moving on to the acer aspire this is a sev uh, 17 inch laptop which is uh, one of the bigger ones we've been looking at in this countdown and you know that's just because most gaming laptops are actually under 17 inches it's a lot easier to um or it's a lot less expensive sorry not easier but yeah you'll notice this has uh, Windows 8, not 8.1 on it, and uh, Core i7 uh, 4702, which is a, actually a little better than the Asus we were just looking at previously. Again, there's no SSD, which is why, um, you know, my big, you know, nagging thing on that. Uh, oh, and also, sorry, all of these were 5400 RPM hard drives. Forgot to mention that. So, but the only, like, thing I can get wrong with this, uh, laptop is the fact that it has a very low battery life you'll notice that even the aces had like a three hour battery life or something this has a 2.5 battery life which is you know that's the max you're going to get out of it so when you're gaming it's obviously going to be a lot less now this is fine if you're not traveling a lot or you're always going to be next to a power uh you know power plug and yeah you also notice it is a lot thicker than the previous one. It's about, probably about the same as the Lenovo's, but you know, if you're traveling with it, it could be a bit bulky, and you also have the 2.5 battery life, uh, 2.5 hour battery life to worry about. Comes with a 750M graphics card from NVIDIA. As always, I would always suggest them. And yeah. So. If you enjoyed this, then please uh, subscribe to my channel, like, it is you know, extremely appreciated, and I will see you guys next time, but also, tell me if you want me to do more countdowns like this, or not countdowns, but just general, you know, overviews of tech, you know, I, I can do that sort of thing for you guys, and if you enjoy it, then uh, tell me, so I will see you guys next time, and please like and subscribe.